the fantasy ad with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello everybody and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. My name is Jonathan Chan and I'll be joined as always by Richard Seville. Uh, just like last week, uh, Kevin Huo is out uh, visiting some family, so it'll be just the two of us today. Uh, and uh, so Richard, uh, how's it going? How has your week nine gone? Well, I can tell you in S- and, uh, SFBX, the Scott Fishbowl, I am 100 points up, and I have to hope that Denzel Mim can't make up that difference. <laughs> uh, Scott Fishbowl scoring, he... Well, yeah, okay. Denzel Mim. Scott Fishbowl scoring, it's, it's possible. If every catch, he, if he makes 30 catches and each one of them is a first down, you're, he's halfway there. <laughs> yeah, well, he's, he's not going to do that. Uh, I had... I, I had uh, Scott Fishbowl has really scary scoring when it comes to quarterbacks and stuff. So it's either... It's... I tell you, if you have if your quarterback's bad, you get a horrible score. If your quarterback's good, you get a fantastic score. There's no middle ground, very little middle ground in Scott Fishbowl for quarterbacks. So uh, doing well in there, and it was against the uh, top team in our division. So I was mm. quite pleased about that because I I was coming into this, I was thinking, oh well, yeah, because she, she is seven and one, and uh, and I was five and three, but. I came through and got over 200 points. So, and in our league, um, I, I'm ahead of our compadre, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin hasn't had a good team. He's had some injuries and things like that. As I, I traded Jonah Smith to him for Brian Hill, not because of any, but I felt like you know like I had extra uh, tight ends, so gave him Jonah Smith. He scored a touchdown for him, but it wasn't enough for him to be. In there, I feel kind of bad because Kevin's always a he's he's a very fierce competitor, and uh, I like to see him in the, in the mix. But not it just doesn't look like it's going to happen this year. What about you? Ah, doing good. I have I have Dalvin Cook, so last two weeks have been very very nice for me in the F sixteen league. I know, I know. <laughs> and uh, you know, squeaked out another uh, Scott Fishbowl win thanks to uh, Leonard Fournette taking over as the receiving back in Tampa. That was nice for me. What? He actually got something yesterday that was like was... yeah he caught four four passes or something like that just enough I just needed Fournette to outscore Ronald Jones and he did because Ronald Jones was phased out completely oh, okay hmm. so it helped yeah yeah just just an overall disaster that game yep that was brutal to watch it was terrible to watch actually I didn't I didn't like I don't like seeing Brady in such straights. But yeah, that happens, you know. Like I think it's the first time uh, since uh, I've got it written down here that uh, he hasn't thrown three or more interceptions since the 2010 playoffs. Did you know that? No, oh, interesting. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, whatever. They, they, you can tell the Bucks gave up on that game at 21, and they were just doing whatever. Should have mm-hmm. should have forced the ball more to Antonio Brown just to see what would have happened. But uh, well, he's in there. Uh, he's in there. Uh, we, he's part of the news on the, on that front because uh, he made his first start and and and, and in he a looked good. Time. Yeah, he looked good and uh, doing what he was doing. Uh, uh, I guess that's kind of part of the news, isn't it? So I'll, I guess I'll yeah, I'll we'll get back you... to Antonio Brown in a bit. Uh, let's start. Let's start off with Kyle Allen suffering what looked like uh, not officially confirmed yet, but a season-ending injury. Uh, leg bent similar to how Dak Prescott's did so it looks like that's a pretty serious injury Alex Smith came in and uh unsurprisingly JD McKissick got a ton of uh got a ton of checkdowns and Alex Smith I don't know Richard I didn't get to see the game but how do you see Smith working in the Washington offense and does Terry McLaurin uh, get a big downgrade for this uh, well I don't know I think I think McLaurin's I mean, he's had Haskins as a quarterback, and he's still done well. So I can say that he's borderline, even probably better than borderline quarterback proof. So McLaurin, I mean, if he can if he can score well in fantasy with uh, Dwayne Haskins, I think he can score well with anybody. The only thing that concerns me is that uh, Alex Smith still looks pretty rusty. Still, um, I mean, it might take a few games for him to get the rust out. Because, uh, you know, he hasn't played in a long time and he's gone through all that rehab and stuff. So, I mean, we might see a lot more of this check down stuff with JD McKissick. So I think we could, so I think we might be seeing a little bit more of that. I think short term, maybe JD McKissick is, is, 
is worth a you know a flex in certain matchups, especially matchups within their own division. You would think so. Ah, uh, that's that's pretty much uh, my thoughts on on uh, McLaurin. I don't think there's. I think as for the rest of the the Redskins pass catchers, I think yeah, yeah I think you got to slide on them. Even as sleepers, I don't. Th- I think it's pretty thin. Yeah, um, I'm uh, in terms of McLaurin, I. Uh, I think he's a really good after catch guy. So even if Alex Smith doesn't want to, you know, huck it deep, McLaurin can still take, you know, the odd short pass and take it, uh, take it long, just like he did on Sunday. So yeah. McLaurin, I'm completely fine with. And like you said, he's near uh, QB proof with the guys he's had to play with so far in his career. So not, uh, not too worried about him. No, no, I think the the best quarterback he had was the one that was just lost. That kind of that one, very bad. Gee, the the, the uh, Redskins have really bad luck for losing quarterbacks the hard way. That's for sure. I mean, like it all started with Joe Theismann many years ago, and then. Uh, Alex Smith, had, it must have been terrible for Alex Smith to see that. So, I mean, they only showed the injury once, and that was enough for me. Yes, for sure. Uh, well, on to another tough injury. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, first game back from injury, didn't miss a beat, did not look rusty at all. Took a total of 28 touches, uh, scored two touchdowns, but got hurt. Uh, it looked like a shoulder injury, and according to Ian Rappaport, his week 10 is in serious doubt at the moment, as of Monday afternoon. Um, ah, tough. They're going to get the MRI. Obviously, if he can't play, Mike Davis goes back to being a you know a borderline RB1 or a low-end RB1, high-end RB2 kind of area. Um, did the Panthers make a mistake giving McCaffrey too many that many touches in his first game back, or was that just pure bad luck on, on that end? Well, you know, I kind of figured that they would uh, at least give Mike Davis a little bit um, more of a workload and not overwork McCaffrey. And this is what happens when you have uh, when you have a running back that is doing a, a lot of the work. And it's kind of something you can be concerned about too with with a guy like. Uh, Perhaps I don't know, I don't know if James Robinson, yeah, but he's he gets complimented quite well uh, in uh, third down situations. He's 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 not a he doesn't you don't see him in third down very often. But you see Christian McCaffrey doing third down work. I th- I think they kind of gotta ease up on him, and I think fantasy owners would rather see Christian McCaffrey on the field at least um, with within reason, because uh, I mean he can still score uh, even. Even with a little bit lighter workload, I think it. I know fantasy player. Uh, you you always like to see your player on there for as many snaps as possible, but I can get a little ridiculous. And I think I think fantasy owners have to sort of like you know uh, kind of hope that his his uh, they dial back his uh, workload just a little bit more uh, because Mike Davis is capable enough to uh, to do uh, relief work for a drive or something like that but not not put Christian McCaffrey in every drive you can still get good fantasy points from from running backs that that don't play every single drive like like took a look at Todd Gurley he's, he doesn't get a lot of but I mean if he's if he's going in and getting the getting the goal line touches that's all you care about really so I mean if they keep Christian McCaffrey in for the for the for the money carries I mean you really you really wouldn't care but I think they could I think it could do I think it could do well if they just dialed back his workload just a little bit yeah for sure just keep you know one of the top running backs in the league healthy it's always good for everybody yeah let's uh, face it well, the, the the Panthers are in it aren't they so well yeah I mean there's... well speaking of running backs that do good or that do well with uh with a little a smaller workload um Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds they're having some trouble in the backfield now I have some I'm gonna expand on this so we'll keep this short for now I'll, keep, I'll expand on the Arizona backfield during our observation section but All right. in terms of what you saw from you know Chase Edmonds this weekend uh, in his first game as the you know the lead back in Arizona what are you doing with him moving forward considering how much he struggled to move the ball in what was supposed to be his you know his smash spot well the funny thing is is that it was actually Kyler Murray that was the guy I mean he went over for 100 yards for you know he was scurrying around like he looked like the old Russell Wilson like uh, the the younger Russell <laughs> the younger the younger Russell Wilson except a little more um, he had a little more burst than than the old Russell, but um, but he's definitely got that scurrying around thing that that Russell used to do. Russell doesn't do that as much as anymore. He doesn't, as you, as you know. 
and uh but um Kyler Murray does and and that's and that is kind of taking a little bit away from uh the running backs still I would have thought that um 25 carries and only 70 yards with his longest run being six yards you kind of would think that Chase Edmonds would be a little bit better or and so it kind of I guess it goes back to the offensive line but in a way it doesn't because Kyler Murray's doing it but I don't know I think there's a different I think there's a different thing to uh, Kyler Murray because he's he's always looking to pass and he's always kind of got that threat to throw the ball whereas a running back is just carrying straight so he he kind of can he can sort of fake out a defense and you know and then turn it up field if he feels so there's you know, whereas a running back, you know, he, he, the running back doesn't have the same thing. He doesn't have to wait for the middle to open up and he can run, you know, straight through, right, when he sees green grass. So, but this, I don't know. It, it's really, I'm really not, I'm, I'm really not on this backfield right now, um, especially with uh, Kyler Murray running as he is. Yeah, well, I have a little bit more. I'll talk about that later. Again, like I said, um, let's move on to our next piece. Jags have a new... Uh, a new fun QB, no Minshew because of the hand injury. Jake Lutton comes in and passes for 300 yards in his debut. Uh, you know, you got DJ Chark off the Schneid for a 73-yard touchdown. He finally looks like the receiver he did last year. Um, did anybody expect this? And what are you doing with Jake Lutton on, on waivers? Are you adding him everywhere? Must add this week? <laughs> well, he's not a must add, but he is. Uh, I think he's a streamable quantity, and I think you've got to... Uh... If you were thinking of uh, dropping uh, LaVisca Chenault or, or Keelan Cole, I think the day will come. Because uh, Jake Luton, um some of these young quarterbacks, like the ones that are, uh, like, I think he was a six-rounder, so... Uh, some of these, some of these downdraft uh, quarterbacks are really doing well. Like, well, Justin Herbert wasn't exactly a downdraft quarterback, and certainly Burrow, uh, Burrow isn't. But, um, but the disappointments, like you know, even Tua is starting to, to starting to turn it up. So this is turning out to be a, a pretty good class for uh, quarterbacks, especially the ones that are coming out of nowhere and doing stuff. I'm kind of happy about Jake Luton. Um, I'm kind of joining the fray. The only guy, I guess, who isn't, I guess, is um Danucci so <laughs> but uh but uh yeah I yeah it's it's pretty good uh pretty good to see Jake Luton but I think uh, it remains to be seen you're not rushing out to pick him up or anything but if it's a bye week and you feel like taking a chance I think he's the kind of guy that if you're in DFS and you feel like chancing it and and filling up your roster with other uh using him as a low and getting uh you know filling up your lineup uh, strong. I think you can take uh, Jake Luton on the cheap while he is still. Yeah, for sure. Um, like he played well. That 13-yard touchdown run was nice. It's a it's it's a shame that they couldn't finish off the two-point conversion to tie it because that would have been really cool for a uh, for a career debut there. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, I like uh, it. I think it's a very, it's very, op- it, it gives you optimism for Shark and the crew. That's, v- it's, it's excellent. Actually, it help, just helps the whole offense and it makes you feel better about the Jaguars. It's been, it's been quite a ride this year with this, with that team. Yeah. Nice young tandem at QB and, uh, and running back there with James Robinson as well. Yeah. Uh, speaking of well, young running backs, uh, Jonathan Taylor uh, benched again for the second straight week, uh, this time due to a costly fumble. Uh, Frank Reich still says he still has, you know, a level of confidence in him, but he Taylor was outsnapped by Jordan Wilkins, or he outsnapped Jordan Wilkins, excuse me. He was outtouched, uh, but he was outtouched by Wilkins. And again, uh, Taylor just doesn't look like the running back people thought he would be. Uh, as we've said multiple times now over the season, he leaves yards on the field. He's not, you know, he's taking whatever the defense gives him, not breaking any more. Uh, it's just shocking considering, you know, how big and how fast he is, but, and how good the Colts O line was, was supposed to be. Um, do you still see Taylor as the starter here, or has this gone full, uh, you know, 40, 40, 10 with Naeem Hines thrown in for, for passing downs? Well, Jonathan Taylor's barely startable now. Uh, he's, you really, you're taking a risk starting him. I mean, he's even, he's kind of like a flex choice. He's, it, Jonathan Taylor's turned into one of those guys where it's it's Sunday and you're deciding who should I start? Should I start Taylor or should he? He's not like an auto start guy anymore. 
Um, that those days are gone. Uh, I think you're at you're at the point where he's a decision that you got to make on a, on Sunday for your lineup. If you're you know if you haven't if you haven't set your lineup yet, so he's a Sunday set lineup. He's definitely in the start set column, and and uh, I think on most occasions, uh, I think even in good matchups, I don't think he's really even even all that trustworthy. Um, because of the because of Jordan Wilkins being in there, you're you're kind of pressed. But but if Frank Reich says he still has a level of confidence in Jonathan Taylor, well then then you kind of have to play him. But you got to play it. Uh, you got to play it where there's a good matchup for running backs. I think that's about. I think that's about it. But um, even then, you're. Uh, it's one of those things uh, where if if you're at the point of uh, of options on Sunday, he's definitely one that uh, is not one of the better options, unfortunately, right now. It's a shame that because uh, so much promise. Yeah, well, hopefully it's just one of those things where he needs some time to adjust to the speed of the NFL and that uh, his physical tools will help him adjust that much better. Um, but it remains to be seen, like you said. Yeah. Uh, well, moving on to another uh, confusing backfield, <laughs> uh, the Chargers. Uh, um, Justin Jackson was apparently injured, uh, put up a big goose egg for owners that started him. And everyone's favorite uh, spoiling running back, Kalen Balaj, came in uh, and played pretty well. 15, you know, 15 carries, 69 yards and a touchdown. Um, he outplayed Joshua Kelly. And it looked like, you know, he was, he's the guy if Justin Jackson remains hurt. Now, is that actionable? I know you strongly have a dislike for Kalen Balaj. <laughs> are, are you taking any action on this, considering Kelly almost did next to nothing um, in a spot where the, the top two running backs on the depth chart were hurt? Why won't they give Joshua Kelly the ball or just let him be? They will not. They got to bring in... Kalen Bal- and 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 Kalen Balaj does this every time. He'll he'll put up a he'll put up a decent he'll put up a, like this is decent numbers, you know, fifteen carries, sixty nine yards, a touchdown, like and two catches, fifteen yards. He does this all the time, and he lures you in. And the next week, uh, you think, well, well, it's a down week, and then yet another down week, and and I could say you could probably say that about Troy Main Pope too. Like, but Tro- Pope got injured, so there's some, so they so they're doing a lot of musical chairs with it, and now they got Kalen Balaj off the practice squad, and, 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 and he does good. And of course, the waiver. You know, I took a look at the early uh, early trending on waivers, and there's Kalen Balaj right up near the top and uh, you know what I, i'm not gonna buy in i just don't i'm just not i think the only thing people can do for the charges is just wait for eckler to get better whenever that's gonna be i think he's still uh, still he's still week to week but he was uh on ir but uh, really you really gotta wait for eckler and eckler can put Kalen blush i i am not and people and take my advice people people that are listening to this podcast if you're listening to this podcast right now do not make Kalen Balaj a priority pickup. You'll be disappointed. He's done it before. He's disappointed people before. So if you want to, if you want to, like, if you want to, if you want to prove me wrong, and then go ahead. And if he if he does prove me wrong, then I'll I'll eat crow. Yeah, but uh, I don't think so. I I, I don't trust Kalen Balaj. I haven't ever since the Miami days. It's just not there for me. I don't know about you. Maybe you uh, if Jackson's hurt again. Uh, I I would add him just because it looked like he's going to be the starter. So if if Jackson's hurt, if Pope is hurt, sure take Balaj. At worst, he's getting a fifty fifty split with Kelly based on based on this last game. Jonah, um, why won't they let Kelly have the ball? Maybe he's just not playing well. Like he <laughs> they they obviously see him in practice more than we see, and he's just not playing that well. Maybe he's not working hard enough in practice. Who knows? But there's got to be a reason the coaching staff is not playing him. And they're giving, you know, fresh off the practice squad, Kalen Balaj, 15 carries yeah, uh, in an injury spot. So, they will not give the backfield over to Kelly at all. They will not. They refuse to. Uh, he didn't play super well when they tried. Well, Before Jackson came back, he didn't play super well. So And Balaj did. So you can't argue with the, the statistical results there, even though the Chargers lost another heartbreaker. You can't really argue with the statistical results there. Um, Still seems kind of weird to me. Oh, well. And but B- Balaj has a revenge game against the Dolphins next week. Come on, that's must-add territory. And then against the Jets next. Oh, goodness. Two revenge games in a row. RB1. Actually, the Jets are kind of tough on the run, aren't they? A little bit. Yeah, they are. A little bit. 
Um, all right. Well, we talked about Antonio Brown a little bit, but very quickly, Richard, where do you see him target wise shaking out between him, Chris Godwin, and Mike Evans? You know, um, did you know that Mike Evans got absolutely now this probably had something to do with Lattimore and in, in in the game because he was covered by Lattimore. Evans got no targets in the first half, zero. He got zip. Of course, um, Brady was busy throwing interceptions, so <laughs> usually um, you can't score fantasy p- points if your team isn't on the field very much in the first half. But so, so yeah, well, um, he's, he's oh he's away from Lattimore for the season now. They've already faced the uh, they've already faced the, the Saints twice. So yes, Lattimore's yes. Out, of the, out of the equation. Yes, he's out of the equation. But uh, like Antonio Brown, like it was a nice start. Though. Although um, you could tell Brady was a little bit annoyed at him because one of the interceptions Brown uh, that he had was uh, um, looked like Brown didn't exactly know what he was supposed to do, and uh, he ended up. Um, I think he flubbed the route a little bit, and uh, and Brady threw the ball. I don't know whether it was Brady's fault or or Brown's fault, but it, it looked more like Brown just um, not really. I mean, like he's just he's just come back already, so to work it in. But if he does work in, and and if you picked him up, he's definitely someone to stash. Uh, keep him. Don't play him next week, but keep him stashed because the uh, Buccaneers are in this playoff chase, and uh, they're going to use Brown. And uh, I think he could be one of these. He could be a league winner, believe it or not. <laughs> Especially if, because let's face it. Like Godwin and Evans have been banged up um, off and on throughout this this whole season, and somehow the Buccaneers have managed to uh, to gather a six and three record, I believe. And uh, so this there's there's room for uh, Antonio Brown to be fed in this this offense. I think we can say goodbye to Scotty Miller and uh, and a few of the other um, uh, the the other down list uh, receivers. Um, Brown 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 definitely comes right up. So yeah. I'm I I am a believer in Antonio Brown is he's not um thing about him and I know you go on about Josh Gordon but Antonio Brown doesn't you know he doesn't get caught with drugs and stuff but he has other other issues that uh, we all know very well about but it but I saw that video during um Sunday night football and it sounds like uh he just wants to keep his head down and play ball and I think uh Bruce Arians has made it very clear he's not going to put up with any any crap. Yes, clearly. It seems like Arians didn't want him there anyways, but Brady wants what Brady gets, or Brady gets what Brady wants because Tom Brady. So. Yeah. All right, last injury for the week before we move on to other topics. Uh, David Montgomery, he is in concussion protocol uh, after a very disappointing game this weekend. Um, I actually do like one of Montgomery's backups who I'll discuss later as a possible spec ad uh, in in deeper leagues but uh, you can discuss the other one now how do you feel about Cordero Patterson as a as an actual true <laughs> running back <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, you know what, you know what I think. If you take Cordero Patterson and you and uh, you put him in your flex and just just because you know just to be cool and uh, and and you win from it, I would just I would think I would actually applaud something like that if you had the guts to put in Cordero Patterson. Um, it's not a bad, it's not a bad choice actually. It's not a bad pickup and and uh, um, a plug and play spot start we call it. And uh, if you spot start uh, Cordero Patterson, I think, you know, uh, I like that kind of fantasy uh, moxie. You know, if you've got the jewels to do it, then go ahead. I mean, I, you know, there's, I mean, it's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. I, I, I don't like it, but I can't rule it out. <laughs> That's the way I feel about him. But Ryan Nall, nah, nah. No, thanks. No, I'm a little bit on Ryan Nall, which I'll explain later as a spec ad. But I'm no. a little bit in on Ryan Nall. No. Not all the way, but a little bit. Oh, I'm, anxious to, I'm anxious to hear what you have to say about that when we get to it. It's a very simple explanation. Okay. Anyways, let's move on to our observations from week nine. Uh, we both have running back-ish related things. Um I'll go first. Since okay. We kind of already alluded to the Cardinals earlier. Yep. Um, everyone was blaming Kenyon Drake early, uh, thinking that he was just garbage. And then everybody was expecting Chase Ed. Everybody was calling for Chase Edmonds to be the starter. He's much better. You know, look, he's not averaging three and a half yards a carry. And then he takes it and averages fewer than three yards a carry. So, you know, um, 
it wasn't Kenyon Drake's fault. And as you said earlier, it's tough for running backs in Cliff Kingsbury's offense to produce because the offense is tailored to or for the success of Kyler Murray. Uh, you have, you know, the read option plays where Kyler keep or he sends his running back straight into the teeth of the defense and they're not getting opportunities neither drake nor edmonds uh if you're the lead back there you're not getting opportunities to you know create in space your you know your main job is to to run up the gut to you know keep the defense on their toes and keep the keep the offense uh a little bit varied at the very least while kyler's running you know outside and creating all this uh, creating everything in space so yeah, I'm just here to stick up for Kenyon Drake. He got a lot of undeserved, uh, undeserved hate over the past few weeks. Uh, no, everybody's say saying hate. Chase Edmonds, Edmonds was clearly better. Uh, Drake is garbage. Uh, Edmonds is going to take over and be an RB one. Well, he's not because Chase Edmonds was a backup for a reason. So you know what? This is the Cardinals' offense, and honestly, if uh, Kyler's been obviously been successful, but Clifford Kingsbury needs to fix something with his run game because it's not sustainable to have Kyler Murray run this often. And have and put so much on him without. Uh, I'm not gonna say he's gonna going to get hurt, but kind of like Lamar Jackson, once teams kind of figure out that's what's gonna happen, it becomes much much easier to stop without a more varied attack. Yeah, um, there's also something too that that might hurt the running backs, and and this is kind of a point too to what you were saying about because they have such a freewheeling type of offense where they um, they do a lot of no huddle and uh, like. They, you know, quick to the snap of the ball, and it doesn't give a doesn't give a running back a good chance to get set. Um, and I think that a huddle, settle down, get ready for the next play. I think this is kind of a downside to the um, to the quick no huddle game that they play a lot of, and I think that can kind of kind of hurt running backs' uh, ability to just settle down, huddle up, work. And then it's a little, it's a little, it's a little different in in this in this kind of this kind of rushed offense, this and this freewheeling style that they do. And uh, so I think there's a lot of that, a lot of that to it. So it's just my th- just my two cents on that. I don't know what you yep. think about that. It's just th- things need to switch uh, switch up in that offense, or else they're going to get too 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 predictable. Uh, right. Anyways, let's move on to your observation. You have another uh, running back centric observation this week. Yeah, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is not as good as we thought he was. He's just not. He's not. He's not good. Okay, yeah, he's he scored a touchdown. He's only had three touchdowns on the year. He's got his first uh, receiving touchdown on on Sunday, but um, and he's had he's had two big weeks. He had one uh, one week of uh, 130 eight yards which is week one he started off bang and then he went week after week after week and he's um and he's done okay with with in on a couple of occasions but um and he scored a touchdown to save your bacon but i'm noticing that the the snap count is steadily dropping like it was uh um like going from week four 74 to 59 then it was 68 at buffalo then down to 53 percent uh Denver. Then it was forty nine percent against the Jets, and it's down to forty percent against Carolina. He scored the touchdown, and which which did well. But I, I, I'm really not. I just don't think he's he's not going to be. He's not. He's definitely not in RB one territory. He's definitely RB two. But or well, even that's a stretch. But I think. I would, but I would say I will, I'll give him RB two. But I mean, he's not where he's not giving you back the value that you that that people. Uh, anticipated in the draft like if, as a first round he's not a first round draft pick anymore at least not not right now i mean things can turn around uh but he's certainly not he's certainly not uh he's certainly not an rb one that you try to try to draft and and of course the inclusion of uh Le'Veon bell who isn't uh who hasn't really started i haven't got his statistics up right here uh, quickly he put, played put, not good he was hashtag not good this week yeah it was hashtag not good this week yeah i didn't oh, think yeah. he was but but nonetheless uh i mean he's yeah, he he only had thirty one percent, but so I don't know what's going on there. But I, I I'm I've lost a lot of uh, uh, Clyde Edwards Hilaire has lost a lot of shine. Are you saying field. Edwards Hilaire is not as good of a player, or just not as good as a fantasy asset? Because um, he's no, still, saying, he still has the fifth most yards from scrimmage this year out of all players, not just running backs. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I'm not saying that. I'm, what I'm saying is, is that for where you drafted him, 
Okay, I thought you were saying the player is not as good as people thought. But as a fantasy asset, yes. They're not using him as much as people thought no, fantasy was, yeah. Cause bit I, of a bust. Because I have to say that uh, Damian Williams last year was like like the... like You compare you compare what you were getting from Damian Williams to what you're getting from Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And I don't think it's as, I don't think it's as steady and, and as... And is good in in production. So for uh, he's not as when I say not as good, he's a good player, but um, he's definitely not RB one that you drafted. I would say. Damian Williams is also very inconsistent outside of the uh, the last I want to say four games of each season and the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You know, he was borderline droppable in the middle of last season with all the injuries and the inconsistency, and then he always comes through at the end of the year and in the playoffs, and then people draft him in the third round again. Happened two years in a row, and it was going to happen this year if they didn't draft Hilaire in the uh, either. So I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I don't know what the contract thing is for Damian Williams. Is he is he contracted for another year? Or they'll probably he have- is the uh, opting out of the season. It doesn't uh, it doesn't elapse a year on his contract, so he's still. He, he's still under contract with the Chiefs next year. So I wonder what they're going to do. They'll probably have to let loose of Darwin Thompson or Daryl Williams or something. Yeah, which is no big loss. They're just guys. Yeah, Not they're a big just deal. guys. Yeah. Hey. All right. Who you got for moving on up? Moving on up. Yeah, it's got to be Curtis Samuel. Probably the top waiver pick, especially with uh, Christian McCaffrey out. He's doing it all. And we, you, you should have had him on your fantasy team. He should, he should not be out there. He should be owned already. But I, I don't know what's the percentages doing uh, there, Jono. Thirty, thirty. That's 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 ridiculous. He should have been owned like like right yesterday. I mean, he was pretty not good up until last week. Um, and even then, it was kind of fluky because they kept because it was he had like five touches something like that, and he scored t- he scored two touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So. I guess people hadn't bought in yet, but now with, you know, nine uh, nine targets, nine catches, DJ Moore looking like he's on the outside looking in. Yeah, now Samuel's a must-add. Yeah, Samuel's a must-add. I'd be interested to see, is he available in our, in our league? Um... No, I believe Kevin may have picked him up. Or no, him. he is a... Oh, not going to be a war. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Curtis Samuel is on waivers in our F6P league. How much you bidding? <laughs> Don't have to answer all that. Of it. Don't, uh, all of it. All of it. Oh, yeah. Sure. I don't yeah. even know how much. I don't even know how much budget I have left. I don't know how much I got. So four hundred odds. Anyway, I'm gonna uh, like uh, that. We we do ours and uh, just for our, our listeners that our league we have a thousand thousand dollars. We do it so that there's more hairs to split. So so well, and it, uh, me, I have uh, Christian Kirk moving up. <sighs> Uh, he has scored five touchdowns in the last three weeks. Uh, he looks like he's developing to a very dangerous deep threat. Uh, Kyler Murray was hitting him all over the field. Uh, and this he's doing this against a, a decent Miami defense. I know the Dolphins have that kind of aura of not good around them, but the, their secondary has been good this year. And Christian Kirk ran all over them. Five catches, 123 yards, and a touchdown, uh, including a 56-yard one from Murray. Uh, yeah, he's starting to score again, as I said, five touchdowns in his last three games, uh, six in his last four after he, uh, struggled with, uh, injuries to start the year. And as he establishes himself, you know, they're using DeAndre Hopkins a little less. Obviously, they're going to start feeding him the ball a little bit more, but Kirk is showing he's more than ready to take over once, uh, Larry Fitzgerald retires at the end of the year. So excited for Kirk uh, moving forward for sure, especially yeah. with his next two matchups in Buffalo and Seattle. Yeah, and I agree. And also uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins, who was that Who was that number 24? Who's the corner of the Miami? They were really getting into it, him and Hopkins. Oh, Xavier Howard. Xavier Howard, that's right. And uh, <clears throat> and the the thing the thing that was happening there is that the Cardinals were gaining yards, but it, you don't get fantasy points for those valuable penalty yards. And that's really sucks because you know, Xavier and Howard, like owners of Hopkins must have been furious with Howard because he was, you know, he was like, what did he have? Three PIs against, uh, against uh, Hopkins? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. But whatever the case, it was freeing up Christian Kirk because Xavier and Howard's a really tough corner right? and he doesn't like, I mean, he does not like getting beat and he'll pull you down. He'll grab you. He'll see if he can get away with anything he can. And you could see that, but. Um, but yeah, it was, it was really, uh, it's really getting nasty out there. I don't, you don't see Nuke getting really, uh, 
upset with corners, but uh, um, Xavier Howard was really frustrating him because he's, you know, because I don't think DeAndre Hopkins likes uh, getting his yardage through PIs either. So, and I do we in fantasy, we like to see Hopkins. So that's, I think that really hurt. That's that's not the way you like to see fantasy points left on the field is when um, the the other team is like, you know, holding you down the field and defensive holding and so forth. So he, this is the thing. Uh, but all credit to Christian Kirk. It all works for him because, uh, um, you know, Hopkins is going to get all the good coverage. So, yeah, Kirk, man, he's he's just he's rising completely. Playing well. There. Yep. Uh- Let's flip that script uh, onto the panic. We uh, yours is a little higher rank than mine, so you can uh, you can start this one off. Yeah, I'm a little getting a little bit concerned about Ezekiel Elliott, even though he had a little bit of a better uh, quarterback this time, and he's not sorting it. I don't think Zeke's happy right now. Zeke isn't playing his his happy Zeke. Like I mean, you know, usually when he gets maybe, first, maybe Zeke should stop fumbling, and then he he'd be a little happier. Yeah, we would be a little bit happier, but. Uh, Owners can't be happy about what what uh, Zeke has done uh, the la- over the past three weeks. Let me just—I'm uh, 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 a bit late with my stats here. Uh, I was—I wasn't ready for the. <laughs> I wasn't ready. I'll just use this. Uh, yeah, just uh, yeah, Elliot. Last three games. Uh, get ready for it for us. I'm sorry. I have to mention this to your to to the fantasy players who own. But uh, Zeke is definitely dropping lower and lower in uh, rankings, he said. This is his last four games in, in fantasy points. Is this the kind of fantasy points you want from Ezekiel Elliott four weeks in a row? Eight, 560, 780, 790. Is this what you want? He hasn't had a touchdown. No, he hasn't had a touchdown. Like, you know, but the Cowboys offense has a lot to do with it. Ever since Dak has left, things have gone steadily downhill for Ezekiel Elliott. I'm quite worried about him. I'm, I'm actually kind of panicking if you can move on from Elliot somehow I think the I think that ship has sailed unfortunately and uh I think you're pretty much stuck with hoping for Elliot to just get better I mean they're going into the bye week and when they come out I don't know how you feel about it Jonathan but Ezekiel Elliott it's getting pretty uh scary yeah the Cowboys are down to a fourth string QB uh the offensive line is very playing like you know they're hurt they're down to their second and third string guys. Um, not not a good recipe for Zeke, especially because he's come down with a fumble problem. I mean, it's not not inspiring any confidence. Um, if you can sell him for anything close to you know for a second round value, I would definitely do that because nobody's respected in the Cowboys passing game, and it's not worth trying to uh, trying to hope that Zeke can you know push through eight man boxes the rest of the season. I want to I want to qualify this too. This doesn't this doesn't mean dynasty people. This is completely different from the dynasty people. Just completely ignore this. This is this is just pure redraft I'm talking here. Yes. Well, uh well, my panic is Adam Thielen. Um I know he was wide receiver one for a while. He caught uh touchdowns what one four four five six seven seven touchdowns in the first six games uh he was right up there with the best of the best but uh his last three games he's had five four and five targets um again in pretty good matchups the falcons the packers and well the Last week, the Packers, that was all Dalvin Cook. But this week, the Lions, and he only managed 38 yards and two catches. Um, in that week six game against Atlanta, he had 51 yards and a touchdown. But that was a very, very late touchdown in garbage time. Um, I know it all counts the same, but just in terms of his usage and where he would be at if not for that, it's concerning that he would have been under 40 yards in three consecutive games uh, with three or fewer catches in all of them. It's strange to see because he had he was getting he was averaging over eight targets a game through through five weeks and then Justin Jefferson came through and Thielen looks to have been phased out or this was just Dalvin Cook coming in and taking it over everyone's job at once but unless uh, especially with the matchup against Chicago coming up if Thielen can't you know it isn't showing up or isn't getting the targets it's tough to trust him as you know the wide receiver too uh, that you drafted him as for sure. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned Justin Jefferson, but there's also uh, I think you got to put Irv Smith into the equation too. He was getting the red zone shots, so um, I don't I don't know if you rush out and get Irv Smith, but I, you probably do. But yeah, you're right. Um, this offense runs through uh, Dalvin Cook, and it's going to until um, he hits into a tough run defense uh, where 
expectations for for uh, Dalvin Cook. Uh, I knew when they were playing the Lions, I thought he could do it again. I think I mentioned that last week. I don't, I'm not sure, but I, I certainly mentioned it in my in my uh, my weekend preview article that uh, um, here come the Lions and he could do it again. So and he did, and uh, so yeah, and this only hurts the the other uh, skill players on the offense. And so you can trust them for yardage, but I don't think you can really trust them for touchdowns because, you know, anytime they get close, you know, it's going to, it's just going to be hammer at home with uh, Dalvin Cook and nobody else. And I think that's what really makes it great for fantasy is when you're, when the running back who is supposed to be going in is the one, but uh, you're right about Thielen, especially Thielen. Um, Jefferson's Jefferson's definitely getting the good targets. Now, when now I mentioned this last week about about good targets and bad targets, and it's it's one of those eye test things. It's something that I really can't um, explain to people uh, unless you actually watch football, like watch the plays of what is a good target and what is a what is a not so good target. Like Jefferson's getting the right now any targets that are being thrown by Kirk Cousins. Justin Jefferson's getting the better getting the better um better looks and uh Thielen is kind of getting the you know outside tough yardage that you gotta you know the grinded out type of targets he's not getting the uh he's not getting the receptions that where you can get a lot of yards out of whereas Justin Jefferson's getting those nice those nice I guess I guess you can call it air yards in a way but Justin Jefferson's getting those nice I guess you can say it I guess you can say air yards but Justin Jefferson's getting the nicer air yards and Justin Jefferson got uh, uh 64 yards on three receptions so I mean he's not getting a lot of targets either but he's getting the nicer but at least you know that's that's decent fantasy points right because 60 i mean it's not it's i mean you'd like to have a touchdown to go with that and it'd, it'd be perfect be you know he 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 but i mean but jefferson's hitting a floor sort of and but Thielen isn't so yeah i tend to agree i think there's a bit of worry going on unless um i don't think any i don't think uh i don't think zimmer's gonna scale back uh, the workload for uh, for Dalvin Cook anytime soon. No, not with him playing this well. Uh, let's move on to everyone's favorite segment of the week. Oh, it's uh, it is our favorite time for the, it's time for yes. Where is it, Mister Unlimited? Gotta be unlimited. Now, last week we had Dalvin Cook, as a matter of fact, and I see, John, that you have Dalvin Cook again. Make your case. Come on. What do you mean, make my case? Dalvin Cook had over 200 yards rushing and another two touchdowns. So we're going to make him. absolutely shredded the Lions, and he was the highest non-QB scorer for a second straight week. We haven't had a repeat Mr. Unlimited yet, and uh, I'm 100% sure that Dalvin Cook deserves this. Uh, Uh, Well... But, 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 I'm going to make a case for, I've got a good case this time. Kyler Murray. I have a perfect counter-argument to your case. I know what it's going to be. I know what it's going to be because the Cardinals lost. Exactly. Disqualified. Kyler Murray cannot qualify for our Mr. Unlimited because the Cardinals lost. (laughs) Dalvin Cook is Mr. Unlimited for the second (laughs) time. But, 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 let me make the case anyway. Because we, that doesn't necessarily mean yes winning you don't have to win but it's harder to win it's harder to be mr unlimited if you don't win your game but you can be mr unlimited if you but there's really nobody else there was really nobody else better than kyler murray 100 yards rushing and uh just totally baked it with uh fantasy points but uh i guess you know in a way i had to i had to make kyler murray a uh at least make him a candidate for for the for Mr. Unlimited because he's so deserving and I hope he gets it one week. Um, he probably could have gotten it I don't know, somewhere down the line, but I think it's coming for Kyler Murray. But I think you're right. I think I think we're gonna have to give it to da- uh, to Dalvin Cook again because of another 200 yard burst. Man, the guy's just awesome. And hey, uh, I'm put that in there as yeah, our you're first gonna, repeat Mr. Unlimited of the season. Yeah, it's gonna have to be a repeat as as much as I say because I'm gonna have to fall the rule but i mean uh kyler murray uh the way he played uh they were so deserving on the win and but uh tua came through um tua looked a lot better this week by the way uh a, a lot he lot did. better and uh so uh it's a shame he didn't win if if the cardinals had a 
came away with the win. It's kind of a shame for the Cardinals, too, because the Seahawks lost, and they would have been able to, you know, catch up to them a little bit. Uh, that wasn't to be. So, yeah, give it to Talvin Cook. He is Mr. Unlimited. Mr. Unlimited. You gotta be unlimited. There you go, Dalvin. You got it. All right. Uh, let's move on and do a quick waiver wire, since I believe we're just hitting an hour now. Uh, no. We got lots. We got about ten minutes. All right. So waiver wire. Uh, QBs are very tough with my thirty-five percent, uh, with the thirty-five percent roster threshold. So I'm gonna go with another repeat of a QB this week in Drew Luck. Uh. As expected last week, uh, I mentioned Drew Locke as a waiver pickup, and he did extremely well. 300 yards passing, two passing touchdowns, another 47 yards on the ground, and a rushing touchdown, 30 points against the Falcons. And this coming week, he has got the... Who do we got here? I think he's got... Oh, come on. Who's his matchup? He's got the Raiders. They're 31st in uh, defensive DVOA and the ninth most, uh, they've allowed the ninth most fantasy points to QBs uh, with his receiving core getting uh, healthy. Uh, you know, KJ Hamler's back. Noah Fant is back on and off if he's not going to the tent. Uh, Jerry Judy's getting more comfortable. He's looking good. And really Locke good. Looked, yep. Locke looked comfortable. Uh, he'll look even better next year when Cortland Sutton is back. But for now, I think against the Raiders, he's a, a decent, uh, a decent pickup. If you're dealing with a Patrick Mahomes or Matt Ryan bye week, yeah, you know something he's turning. He, uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I like, I like about Locke. I'm seeing growth, and that's great because got a lot of confidence with that comeback <clears throat> against the Chargers. That was just, that was just kind of an, a really, really good uh, game-winning drive that the won it on the last play. Uh, who, he threw it to uh, a guy who. Uh, is actually I'm gonna have to change my spec ad because he's uh, because he's actually uh, a waiver guy. <coughs> That's K- it's kind of a segue here. <coughs> is KJ Hamler uh, ten targets this week and uh, I think it's going up. He's definitely uh, he's definitely in Drew Lock's sights a lot and uh, and with Noah Fant uh, not around, I think it's actually doing well for not having uh, Noah Fant around. I think it's it's kind of forcing Drew Lock to uh, expand his horizons, and so guys like Hamler and I see you have uh, Tim Patrick on the list too. So um, yeah, the, the, yeah. I mean, the Broncos threw a ton to try to come back against the Falcons. Judy had fourteen targets, Hamler had ten, and Patrick had nine. They all had a ton of opportunities. Yeah, so it's it's really happening. It's coming together for Drew Lock, and in fact, and this is why you people. Now you see. Now more of you, more of you came to the website, and more of you read my article this week. I checked the numbers, you know, <laughs> and uh, my weekend preview. And uh, I said that you could put Drew Locke in as your as a as a good DFS start as a as a, as a cheapy DFS, and then build a team team around it, and you would have done good. So, so you see, even though I don't play a lot of DFS, I know this. I know what I want to talk. At least sometimes. Ooh, you, gave me a, you gave me a lot of grief on the show last week for picking Drew Lock as my uh, my QB waiver. Uh, you, gave well, me, you gave me quite a bit of grief. I changed my mind. Oh, midweek. Well, no, it was after after the podcast. I had to I had to sit back and think. Maybe it was a bit harsh on John. I think you know. I'm just extremely convincing. <laughs> I'll give you that. I mean, I'm just an extremely convincing. You take podcaster. it any way you want, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, uh, other way. Come on, we got to get into some other waves. I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about Irv Smith because we already mentioned him a little bit. But um, yes, tight ends are getting kind of thin these days, and they're getting very hard to trust. And yeah, you're going to be chasing the points with Irv Smith, but maybe not. I mean, like obviously, getting now near near the end zone, it's obviously going to be Dalvin Cook mostly. But on occasions, Irv Smith is going to be a is going to get a target or two. But uh, I think. He's definitely somebody you can pick up as a as a, as a, depending on matchup. But um, I like Irv Smith. Uh, I was hoping for better this year, but you know, it's the Dalvin Cook show. Uh, Dalvin Cook. The whole yep. show's about Dalvin Cook. Anyway, uh, I'll move on to a waiver running back. Okay. Uh, we've already talked about McKissick. Uh, we've already talked about Balage. So I'll go Duke Johnson. Um, David Johnson is out with a concussion. Uh, they don't know his status yet, but if he misses a game, Duke Johnson will be the starter. Uh, we know his ceiling isn't the highest. Um, he's not really a starter, but he has a safe floor considering 
his you know work at the passing game. So if you're playing PPR leagues and you need a flex or you need an injury replacement or a bye week replacement, Duke Johnson, if David Johnson is out, is a solid option and somebody that should be added off waivers. Maybe not for a huge amount, but should be definitely a consideration for 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 an ad for sure. All right, I like your addition to also of uh, uh, the the other name that you have on there, J.D. McKissick, whom we mentioned before. So can you? I've got to look up because I had Hamler as a spec ad, and he's better than a spec ad. So I got to look up for a spec ad. Can you do your? Uh, can you do your spec first? Yep. Uh, this is like a deep spec. Um, maybe not even a spec. This is just a really deep league ad uh, for this week. David Montgomery, we mentioned earlier, he also suffered a concussion and you never know what's going to happen. He could be gone for two weeks. He can come back this week. But if he doesn't play, I would almost uh, prefer Ryan Nall over Cordero Patterson just for this week because Nall is the pass catching back, um, the more traditional pass catching back, as it were. Ironic because Patterson is a natural wide receiver, but Nall played well uh, this week against um, well the Titans. Well, sorry, the Titans. He's got they've got the Vikings next week. Excuse me. Um, but against the Titans, he had four catches, thirty-five yards, scored a touchdown. Um, he hasn't received a carry all season, but against the Vikings, uh, I assume they're going to have to throw it a bunch because um, I don't think they're going to be able to run with Patterson on the Vikings. But uh, short passes from Foles, I think Nall as a deep league guy um, is sort of intriguing as a, as a kind of you know PPR sneaky type guy. I'm not saying he's going to blow up later in the season or anything like that, but it's interesting seeing that you know he got four targets without Montgomery, you know, in that second half. So Mm. if you're desperate, if you're desperate in like a 14 team or something, or, you know, you're going super cheap DFS in a, you know, PPR or something like that. uh, I'm not, I'm not totally opposed to Null. I think he's a sneaky contrarian pick to everybody that might rush off and get Cordero Patterson. Right. So, so this isn't really a, so this isn't really a stash spec ad. This is more of like, yes, a, this, a, this is a, a, a spot, you know, start sort of spec. Yes. Okay. If you want, if you want a real spec, it'd be Michael Pittman because he actually came out and played well. <laughs> you still, hey, that's the guy I just put in. Oh, I didn't read that. Excuse me. Go ahead, Richard. You continue my thought. <laughs> Michael, I, I actually wasn't on the chart. I was on. I was on Ryan Nall's game log. Yeah, but Michael Pittman's in a totally different team. The Colts. <laughs> I just remembered Pittman. I actually did not read your chart. I actually just thought of Pittman off the top of my head. I did not steal your guy, but you can explain why he's a good spec ad. Well, I can explain why he's a good spec ad. I'll tell you can. why he's a good. I'll tell you why he's a good spec ad because. Um, he was on 80, 87% of the snaps for the Colts for the first time for like weeks. He's been off because of uh, injury and uh, looks like he's come back. I mean, last week, his first week back, they sort of just, I guess they were just working him in. Um, it looks like uh, he could be. And I, when it comes to the Colts, I want to qualify this first of all. The Colts are just, Colts receivers especially, are just, I mean, well, I don't really. <laughs> I don't know why we didn't have Mowali Cox. Oh, well, Mowali Cox got injured, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not sure if he got hurt, but there that that tight end rotation is yeah, still sucks. too confusing. I'm still and I still lean Burton for for that. But anyways, I, if I had, it gun to my head picking one of those three tight ends. I still pick Burton. But anyways, Pittman is a Pittman is a mustache. Get it? Get it? I've done that joke before, so I don't want to wear it out too much. But anyway, yes. um, it is November. You're allowed to wear it out this month. Right? Okay. <laughs> but anyways, he had. Uh, but he had uh, seven targets, for, uh, four catches, 56 yards. He hasn't had a touchdown this year. But um, Rivers, um, owing to what the the backfield is so lousy, I just do not want – but you see, I like these big receivers, like these big – because this, this guy's a big receiver, right? And I like, you know, these – well, we see what A.J. Brown is doing, and we see, you know – and we see what, of course, DK Metcalf can do. So these big receivers are kind of like the in thing right now, like Mike Williams and, and, and that. Oh, I really like Mike Williams, by the way. His, you know, actually, Mike Williams was a guy that he's could have been moving on up for me. So, but anyways, Michael Pittman, yeah, uh, pick him up, stash him, and uh, and you could be, uh, you could be getting something good. Pick him up. He's a great stash right now. So uh, he's my spec ad of the week. Stolen by Jono. I didn't steal it. I, I segued it for you. It was perfect. 
There's a perfect oh, segue my. for you. I just introduced your topic. All right, final uh, thoughts. <laughs> final thoughts. I don't really have any. I'm just staring at the fact that the Patriots are still losing to the Jets. Are as they? Of, as of 54 seconds left in the third, they're down 17-20, and the Jets are in the red zone. Um, I'm all in on Trevor Lawrence now. Just lose out, lose to the Jets both times. Just get Trevor Lawrence. End this. Um, I'm okay with the losing season. I expected a losing season. After all the defensive opt-outs, but this is bad losing to the Jets. Oh, it is. You can't give... If if the Patriots give the Jets their first win, how will you feel? I mean, I feel much closer to to Trevor Lawrence, which is not a bad thing. Uh, That hippie. You know, I I really don't think... You know, I have lost confidence in uh, early round quarterbacks in the draft it's guys like Luton that are they're that, but, are, that are tooting and shooting and and then but like and, and just herbert ago, i like talking about how good yeah herbert and burrow and you know they're, they're the first okay, round qbs are playing well yeah, and Tua, they're, they're playing about, well yeah this is a this is a good year will next year be as good uh, we could get a, i mean it could be a mariota winston year next year you know uh those two never had the hype that lawrence had Okay. And still has. Fields is good too, so I'm happy with either. Yeah, he just needs a haircut. Yeah, I'm happy with either one. Fields or Lawrence. Lawrence should get, get a haircut. Done. Get a haircut. Get a haircut, no. you younger swoopers snapper. I just assume that he will not cut his hair. It's his mm. brand. He, he he absolutely will not cut his hair. Mm. Uh, I guess my final thought for this week is... Uh, uh, um yeah i uh it's actually has to do with justin herbert um uh justin herbert he's just i don't know what it is i he almost won the game on the last play of the game and the guy couldn't keep his feet in bounds it just looked so close for him to get a win. wins have been really tough for him he had the bad beat they've had a lot of bad beats the chargers with with herbert but i will say this herbert looks the part and uh, i think he's uh uh, really, really good quarter, and and I don't know, I don't care what you say, but if you own Chargers receivers, and it looks like now Mike Williams is starting to come into it. I mean, obviously his his favorite receiver is Keenan. Keenan Allen owners must be just thrilled to no end with this guy. Hey, he's getting target after target and catches after catches. I mean, before this season, you know, Tyrod Taylor. You know, remember how we downgraded Keenan Allen? Look at him now. Yep. I will say the downgrade was warranted with Tyrod at uh, at QB. Who knows how long he would have started if he if he, if that doctor didn't puncture his lung. It's such a what if situation. Oh my God! It's twenty seven seventeen. Come on, man. <laughs> Uh, anyways, back to it. Yeah, who knows if Tyrod uh, or if Herbert would have even been starting if that doctor never punctured uh, Tyrod's lung. He yeah. could still be starting. Uh, uh, who knows? I'm falling. I, I, I'm really. Uh, I'm quite. Uh, I'm quite fascinated by this quarterback because he he does a lot of plays that are, he does the. Um, I mentioned in my article. He does the he does the old Montana eye trick sometimes when the, when they're, when they're near the red zone where he uh, looks at one receiver and actually has in mind the other one, and then he switches and then throws it to him. That's 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 kind of a mature trick. He's kind of got he's he's got a lot of maturity for a, for a rookie, or at least he's been studying the the he's been studying the tricks of the old masters. That's for sure. So yeah, that's no, my Herbert that's, Herbert looks awesome. Yeah, that's really all there is to it. And that's my final thought. And I hope everyone has a good week ten. God, you can't believe week yep. ten. I can't believe double digits. Yep, double digits already. We made it. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, everybody. Thanks for listening to the show again. Hope everybody's week ten goes well. Uh, we'll be back next week with Kevin. Uh, maybe with Kevin. Uh, who knows if he's still gonna be still gonna be visiting? So more like I promise you, Kevin. We don't wanna we don't wanna get your hopes up. Uh, so you don't, you don't listen to just us again. But uh, again, thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll see you next week.